It is true there's several orders of magnitude more data coming into the human mind uh, much faster, and the human mind is able to learn very quickly from that, filter the data very quickly. You know, somebody might argue your comparison between sensory data versus language, that language is already very compressed. It already contains a lot more information than the bytes it takes to store them, if you compare it to visual data. So there's a lot of wisdom in language, there's words, and the way we stitch them together, it already contains a lot of information. So is it possible that language alone already has enough wisdom and knowledge in there to be able to, from that language, construct a, a world model and understanding of the world, an understanding of the physical world that you're saying LLMs lack? So it's a big debate among uh, philosophers mm -hmm. and also cognitive scientists, like whether intelligence needs to be grounded in reality. Uh, I'm clearly in the camp that uh, yes, uh, intelligence cannot appear without some grounding in uh, some reality. It doesn't need to be, you know, physical reality. It could be simulated, but um, but the environment is just much richer than what you can express in language. Language is a very approximate representation of our percepts and our mental models, right? I mean, there, there's a lot of tasks that we accomplish where we manipulate uh, a mental model of, uh, of the situation at hand, and that has nothing to do with language. Everything that's physical, mechanical, whatever, when we build something, when we accomplish a task, a modern task of you know grabbing something, etc., we plan our action sequences, and we do this by essentially imagining the result of the outcome of a sequence of actions that we might imagine. And that requires mental models that don't have much to do with language. And that's, I would argue, most of our knowledge is derived from that interaction with the physical world. So a lot of, a lot of my, my colleagues who are more uh, interested in things like computer vision are really on that camp that uh, AI needs to be embodied essentially. And then other people coming from the NLP side or maybe have, you know, some, some other uh, motivation don't necessarily agree with that. Um, and philosophers are split as well. Uh, and the, uh, the complexity of the world is hard to, uh, it's hard to imagine. It, 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 uh, you know, it's hard to represent uh, all the complexities that we take completely for granted in the real world that we don't even imagine require intelligence, right? This is the old Moravec paradox from the pioneer of robotics, Hans Moravec, who said, you know, how is it that with computers, it seems to be easy to do high level complex tasks like playing chess and solving integrals and doing things like that. Whereas the thing we take for granted that we do every day, um, like, I don't know, learning to drive a car or, you know, grabbing an object, we can't do with computers. Um, and, you know, we have LLMs that can pass, pass the bar exam, so they must be smart. But then they can't learn to drive in 20 hours like any 17-year-old. They can't learn to clear up the dinner table and fill up the dishwasher like any 10-year-old can learn in one shot. Um, why is that? Like, you know, what what are we missing? What what type of learning or or reasoning architecture or whatever are we missing that um, um, basically prevent us from from you know having level five sort of in cars and domestic robots? Can a large language model construct a world model that does know how to drive and does know how to fill a dishwasher, but just doesn't know how to deal with visual data at this time? So it it can operate in a space of concepts. So yeah, that's what a lot of people are working on. Uh, so the answer, the short answer is no. Mm -hmm. And the more complex answer is you can use all kinds of tricks to get uh, uh, an LLM to basically digest uh, visual representations of, representations of images uh, or video or audio for that matter. Um, and uh, a classical way of doing this is uh, you train a vision system in some way. And we have a number of ways to train vision systems, either supervised, semi-supervised, self-supervised, all kinds of different ways. Uh, that will turn any image into a high-level representation. 
basically a list of tokens that are really similar to the kind of tokens that uh, typical LLM takes as an input. And then you just feed that to the LLM in addition to the text. And you just expect the LLM to kind of, uh, you know, during training to kind of be able to uh, use those representations to help uh, make decisions. I mean, there's been work on, along those lines for, for quite a long time. Um, and now you see those systems, right? I mean, there are LLMs that can that have some vision extension, but they're basically hacks in the sense that um, those things are not like trained end to end to to handle to really understand the world. They're not trained with video, for example. Uh, they don't really understand intuitive physics, at least not at the moment. So you don't think there's something special to you about intuitive physics, about sort of common sense reasoning about the physical space, about physical reality? That's, that to you is a giant leap that LLMs are just not able to do. We're not going to be able to do this with the type of LLMs that we are uh, working with today. 